here at the Geneva Motor Show to see the hotly anticipated Renault 5 E-Tech, which is heading up the superstar league of much more affordable electric vehicles. But don't be deceived by this cheeky, chunky chappy because it is decked out with a whole load of kit that you just would not expect to see on an electric vehicle at this price point or in this size bracket, including V to G. So let's get into it. Like fully charged? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. So the Renault 5 was first teased in January 2021 and it really marked the start of Renault's commitment to making much more affordable and accessible electric mobility, much more democratised. So it seems very appropriate that this is closely related to, its, to the Renault 5, which was, first came to be in 1972. And that car, its history was steeped in the strive for, for efficiency and affordability. That was at a peak oil crisis. And so it seems very, very appropriate that this has come back for the electric era. But it's also very closely related to the R5 Turbo, which I have seen described as one of the most steroid-infused little rascals ever to appear in a bedroom wall poster. So sensible, yes, efficient, yes, affordable, yes, but also, I'm guessing, many, many fun features that make this a real joy to drive. And that's what we're going to be looking out for on this particular yeah, pop yellow colour. The barriers have gone, which means that we are definitely competing for time and space here, so apologies for that. But let's start by talking about the design, because I think you look at this immediately and there is something joyful, and yet it has this sort of quite sort of confident stance, and I, I hate to use the word confident when describing a car, but certainly you look at this and there's something a bit gnarly, it's sort of standing there like, whoa. But equally, it has a number of features that soften it and give it that real cute, sort of mischievous, cheeky character. Not least these really, really nice headlights, which by all accounts, wink at you when you approach the car. Now, two of the sort of really exciting colors, certainly I think anyway, are this pop yellow and pop green. And they have this, this sparkly effect in there. And how amazing is that? I mean, imagine seeing that on a damp, dreary, gray day and you inject it with this wonderful color. And if not that, very, very easy to find in a car park. Of course, there are also some other muted colours if, you know, yellow or green perhaps is not your thing. I have to also mention these floating um, lights here. These are, of course, all inspired by the Renault 5, the Super Sank of, of uh, the 70s. Um, I think they're really cool. These ones, obviously, meant to be kind of like the fog lamps, but these will be your sort of day running lights. 18 inch wheels, lovely big 18 inch wheels. And obviously, depending on the um, spec and the trim that you get, you can get a variety of different wheel designs. The great thing about this is that they are right at the outer edges. You have super, super short overhangs and that all has the effect of absolutely maximizing the space that you have interior. This is 3.92 meters in length, making it a tad bigger, just by 10 centimeters than the Citroen EC3 and a little bit smaller than the MG4 and the BYD Dolphin. But certainly you're not gonna have too much trouble parking that uh, if you, know, you live in a pretty busy place. Not least also because it has automatic emergency braking in reverse, which again, another really nice feature. The rear doors, they are opened via this bit here, which that has the additional benefit of making this much more streamlined. These sort of door handles that pop out, they do create that much more drag. Putting the door handle here, that is a significant help. And this whole shape has been made incredibly swoopy. There is in fact this sort of secret blade here, which is definitely an aerodynamic feature, helping to create a really, really tidy wake at the rear of the, of, of the vehicle. And I have to say, this is glorious. I love the look of this rear. That, again, really, really inspires that nostalgia. And perhaps that's really comforting if you're driving behind one of these. 326 litre boot, which is about average for a car of this size. I would say my one gripe with it is that there is this big, big lip, which imagine if you're lifting up a suitcase that's reasonably heavy, you've got to kind of lift it and sort of doof it down, which I don't know, I'm sure some people can absolutely get over that. I think it's nice if you are able to have not a lip, but that's absolutely fine. 
Um, there is also a fake floor which hides your charging cable down there. And there is in fact 60-40 split so you can get much, much more space if you flip the seats down. So plenty of space to do, you know, all your DIY of a weekend. We've come inside and I, I almost feel like I need to whisper because being at Geneva Mo Show, there is so much music. It is so, it's a bit of an assault on the senses. And in here is an absolute cocoon. And that's been very deliberate. They've put a lot of effort into the acoustic comfort of this car. There's sort of absorbent materials, um, a smart cocoon, whatever that means, and, a, and an acoustic windscreen which of course is really important when you're driving an EV because it's so silent so you pick up other noises and, and it wants to create that kind of very calm atmosphere. But I feel like I'm in a, in a, like a very plush hotel lobby. It's, it's beautifully quiet. Let's talk about materials for a second. I don't know how I feel about this yellow colour, but I'm sure some people will absolutely love it. Uh, but what I will say is that it does have a really, really premium feel. There's been a lot of recycled materials made from plastic bottles specifically. And there is even denim, which is a really interesting choice. But I guess denim is kind of timeless and actually a very robust fabric. So maybe it makes a tremendous amount of sense. Infotainment, there are two screens, uh, Google built in, as per the began, which is great because, you know, Google know what they're doing. And we have seen that when car companies do infotainment, it doesn't always go according to plan. Um, that's also sort of really helps with um, electric vehicle charging planning um, and which can integrate with the overall battery management system. So everything has been designed to make, to get as many kilo, miles per kilowatt hour as possible, all integrating with that lovely infotainment system as well. There are also a good amount of physical buttons, which we always love to see, and especially because it means that your passenger can control the things that they can see without sort of overly distracting the driver by fiddling around in the screen. I <laughs> have to point out this, uh, which what in the Charlotte Tilbury is that? It is a uh, gear selector, well, yeah, gear selector, that looks like a lipstick and by all accounts you can get different sort of add-ons to that which is um i kind of like it i think i kind of like it i'm not sure remains to be seen uh, but overall this has the sense of you know this is a car designed for people who enjoy driving and that is very much the sense that you get with everything tipped and biased towards the driver which is ex exceedingly cool back seat test and i am so sad to say that it doesn't do too well in this particular metric. Now, this seat is in a slightly exaggerated position, but not overly so, and my knees are really knocking against the back of this. I'm five foot three, Jack is six foot five. There is no way that he would be able to fit in the back of this car. Um, but let's say that you're putting children in, in the back here, and there is um, Isofix there as well. I think one of the things that they would have a particular problem with is that it does feel quite dark, number one, and number two, these window sills are really high, so you would probably struggle to really look out of the window. Um, but if you are buying this car, I think it probably isn't being bought as your most wonderful, perfectly suited family car. This is a fun car, and perhaps for a particular juncture in your life that maybe doesn't feature lots of little people. Let's talk about price. Now this is going to sit somewhere between 25,000 to 30,000 pounds. And to give you some idea, you know, that's very, very comparable to the MG4 and to the BYD Dolphin. And what does that get you? Well, that gets you either a 40 kilowatt hour battery or a slightly larger 52 kilowatt hour battery, giving you 185 miles to 248 miles of range, respectively. And that's all largely because it sits on this brand new platform, the Amp R which is specifically designed for B-segment cars and will appear on the Renault 4, also the new Nissan Micra and the Renault Twingo. With regards to charging, there is 11 kilowatt AC and it will do 100 kilowatts DC, meaning it can go from 20 to 80% in 30 minutes, which is not the most extreme in the world, but it's totally fine. 
and there's this really cool charging indicator with this lovely five on it and that's extremely handy because you will see electric vehicle drivers at the charger either getting out their phone to see what their battery is doing or doing some kind of weird gymnastics of looking at the screen and if you have something there that just makes your life that much more straightforward. Well, what's left to say apart from that is exceptionally cool and not only is it cool, it's much more affordable and I think when you get that sweet spot of cool and affordability, that's where you create an icon. As much as the R5 was an icon in the 80s, this is creating an icon for the 2020s.